Hey guys, what's up? It's KissAnalog.com. We're going to go measure some Cat 5 voltages. So you got to be safe. Hey guys. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me, but welcome to Kiss Analog and meter safety. Hey, if you're going to go measure cap 5 voltages, you're going to look a little like this. You're going to have a helmet, some face gear, you're going to have gloves, and the right foot gear. you got to be safe. Oh yeah, and you're not going to use a meter that's not rated cap 5. I'll be right back. Hey guys. Hey, no, seriously, guys, if I'm outside working in what they call Category 4 area, that's where the power comes from the electrical company to the building. That stuff there, that's dangerous stuff. That's scary. That voltage, there's no circuit breakers to protect me. It's coming from the power company. It's like, hey, here, here you go. Here's a whole bunch of current. Here's a, here's a voltage. Have at it. Uh, that's scary stuff, okay? They call it Category 4. So they came out these categories so they could rate test equipment for what category you might work in. And they try to make it, you know, some guideline to try to make these things safe, okay? And that equipment that I was wearing, helmet, face shield, oh, by the way, hearing protection, and fire retirement clothing, and the right foot gear. Yeah, you're going to be wearing all that stuff. And also you're going to have most likely a buddy at least one buddy and a meter like this this size probably be perfect the shape of it those big old gloves probably fit there nicely uh this is a cap four meter you could do this kind of uh this kind of work with the meter like this or this guy here this is a cap four as well uh i've got a couple cap fours most of the stuff's not cap fours cat three or less all right i'm going to talk about the categories I'm going to explain what they are. So guys, I watch a lot of multimeter reviews. I really like them. I, you know, a lot of good guys out there doing multimeter reviews. Fun watching the teardowns and all that stuff. And uh, But I do cringe a little bit when I hear them say, Oh, well, because we don't see this safety device, it's not safe for AC voltage. So don't do it. Read, use it for your car battery, you know, your DC power here on the bench. Well, that's most time when I see that in review, I can't think of a time when I thought that that's not really true. They're completely safe. I'm not wearing that. I don't look like I came from the moon wearing all that protection, right? Because I'm not in Cat 4. I'm sitting here at the bench. This bench is Cat 1. DC stuff that they're talking about cat one stuff uh, cat two maybe the AC power stuff so let's talk about those categories and where they all come from what they are but let, let's kick off by just saying in 1973 I believe it was that they came out with the the European Committee came out with what they call the the low voltage directive and what happened I'm going to pull up my board and kind of go over some stuff with you guys, all right? Uh, they came out with this IEC 348, and, uh, and then UL said, okay, we're going to use UL 1244, and we're going to base it on this, this document, and uh, we're going to say we'll give people our UL listing if, uh, if it meets this. Okay, so then in 1988, they changed it to IEC 1010-1, and UL said, okay, we're going to change to UL3111. And I think what it was is 50 volts, and I, I think they adopted that from down here too. 50 volts AC, anything below that was safe. Anything above that, you know, potentially dangerous. 75 volts DC. And I think that was a square root of 2 times 50, and then rounded it up. <laughs> Make a nice even number, 75 volts. I believe that's what it came down to. Well, 10 years later almost, they said, no, we're going to change it to 30 volts AC, and we're going to change the DC to 60 volts DC. 
anything below that, safe. And I think they came out with, I don't know, it was a 150 pound man or person with a certain you know resistance in the body and certain voltage, 30 milliamps could kill you or potentially fatal. I don't know, something like that. They came up with all this stuff, all right? So, so then they came out with this guy, which is what we have today. And UL still uses UL3111. Now they just adopt this instead of that. So today, all the meters are gonna fall into this range. And by the way, when they did this, they also said they're all gonna have CE marking. So if they conform to this, they're gonna have that. If I'm if I build multimeters, I can go test to this and I can self-certify myself as CE and I can just put CE on. Okay, that's what that is. Uh, now, if I'm Fluke, if I'm Greenlee, somebody with some bucks, and if I can get a lot of money from my multimeters, then I'm going to go get it listed because then people will totally trust it. So I'm going to go to UL, have it listed, or I'm going to get certified under CSA, TV, or VDE. I'm going to send it to some other lab. They're going to, you know, with a bunch of meters, they're going to do a bunch of tests, and they're going to come back and certify me. So it costs bucks to do that, and, you know, they can do that. Now, some of these inexpensive meters, they can't afford to do that and sell them inexpensively. So they're just going to self-certify. So if that company wants to be around, they don't want to be put out of business, CE could come by and check on their paperwork and stuff. And if they don't comply, they can take that away. You know, they get in trouble. So if it's any kind of company you think has been around for a while or is going to be around, you know, then you can, you know, hopefully trust that that they actually test it to that standard. I mean, test it to this standard and apply that, okay? And and then there's another listing. This MSHA, that's Mine Safety Hazardous uh, Agency, I think what it is. And by the way, this doesn't just apply to multimeters, but test equipment is what I believe that applies to. This MSHA, what that means is you could be working around Places where there's an explosive atmosphere, mining industry, obviously, is where this came from. And if there's an arc or a spark inside that meter, it's not going to be exposed to that explosive atmosphere and, and really cause an explosion. So this guy here is kind of the ultimate as far as uh, containing that arc blast or sparks and stuff. This guy has the MSHA on it. This guy's an older meter, and by the way, I have some older meters here, like this fluke right here. This fluke, man, this, back in the day, this guy was the meter to have. This was a very, I, I want to say it's four or five hundred bucks even back in the day. Uh, if you find these on eBay, it's a great meter. Uh, maybe I should review this one day, but this is a great meter, and uh, anyway... No category rating on it because it was before the cats came out. So, uh, yeah, I've got a few meters here. Now, when Tektronics are making meters, this TX3, this guy's Cat 3. That's it. A lot of the meters I have here are only Cat 3. Uh, Fluke, 189, Cat 3. Yeah, uh, this guy right here, this little dude here. What is this? I think this is a, yeah, that's a Cat 3. I was going to say it's Cat 2, but that's a Cat 3. So, yeah, a lot of these little guys. And then I have this little uh, X-Tech. What is this? This guy's Cat 3 as well. All right, so let's go over the categories. Let me explain uh, the categories, what they mean, and let's do that. All right? Okay, guys. I'm pretty horrible drawer but okay cat ratings I just want to kind of explain where they are the power coming into your house or your building uh, it has a meter out here that power coming in here to that board that meter that's pretty much cat 4 outdoors uh, if you have another building over here that the power runs over to all that stuff's cat 4 out here not a lot of protection don't have a lot of breakers out here protecting anything. A lot of energy, uh, lightning strikes, all that kind of stuff. This is, you know, transients. All that stuff, scary stuff out here. 
Category three, a little less scary. You go through a breaker panel, and you might have some receptacles, but they're short. They're close to the uh, panel. Maybe you have some appliances that are on a short run next to the panel. So those might be cat three. Then over here, the receptacle on over, that AC stuff, you know, from your wall, like the stuff all my equipment's plugged into, that's cat two AC power, okay? Cat one I didn't even show, but that's my bench over here. It goes through a transformer. You know, all these devices have transformers. So my my uh, bench, you know, cat one is protected by an isolation transformer, usually low energy stuff. AC, DC is just low energy stuff. Uh, so anyway, that's cat one. Okay, just kind of wanted to kind of give you an idea that cat four is the scary stuff and it gets like it's a, it takes a big drop down to three it's a lot safer over here and it's even a lot safer over here so those meters that you see a lot of times with all that protection stuff if it's cat four that's why because it's got to be here cat three still has to be safe obviously all these categories has to be safe that's why they have the categories for them but uh i just want to give you guys some sanity checks on stuff if you see a meter review and if it doesn't have the protection for this kind of stuff, it's still safe for category two, okay? So if it's marked category two, category three, and if it comes from any kind of reputable company at all, even at the bigger name Chinese companies, I mean, you know, these cat ratings have to be uh, checked out by people and no one wants to get caught selling something that's unsafe unless they want to be out of business the next day so anyway just want to go over this cat stuff okay guys i'm back <laughs> new board change the colors to make it easier to kind of see the different lines here because you know not that great of a drawer so cat ratings cat four that's the highest rating you get that's Three phase utility type stuff. Service entrance. Service entrance is where the drop, the power utility company, the utility power drops into your building. That's the service entrance. That's where the meter is. So that stuff, you know, it's all cap four. That's the scary stuff. That's electricians, well trained. You know, they go through apprenticeship, journeyman, masters, those guys. They're out there working on that stuff. Okay, Cat 3, same thing, well-trained guys. Uh, you might be working in an industrial building, going off measuring motors and uh, lighting equipment, stuff like that, so it's three-phase distribution, feeders and lighting. So these two things here, if there's an issue in the meter, if you're taking a current reading and you forgot to move the probes, well, that current reading, it's going through a shunt in your meter. That little metal, you know, shunt bar that you see. Sometimes it's a 5 milliohm surface mount resistor. It's a little shunt device. And uh, it's basically a short circuit, you know, 5 milliohms. There might be 10 milliohms between the meter leads because you got a few milliohms in the meter leads. You got, uh, you got a milliohm in the fuse, maybe. And you got the, uh, the five milliohms of, of uh, that shunt. And that shunt's dropping that voltage so it can measure. That's how it figures out what the current is across it, okay? So then you go and you forget to move your leads. You go to measure a voltage. Well, you got voltage divided by 10 milliohms. That could be like 10,000 amps. So lots of current. So that's why you have those high rupture capacity fuses. Because out here, that's all that's going to stop the current, probably. Now, cat two, now I'm over here on the other side of the wall, and I've got a breaker panel. I got a 15 amp, maybe 20 or maybe even a 30 amp breaker, but most likely a 15 amp breaker. Yeah, so now you got a breaker to, to uh, do a lot of the protection for you. So, category two, you got a single phase power, and it's usually, the, the way you can tell category two, it's usually got a, a, a power cord. Like all this equipment that I have plugged into 
the outlets back here those are those all fit in category two okay and then category one is electronics that's sitting here at the bench that's on the other side of an isolation transformer that's inside so my equipment here all this stuff has isolation transformers in it it's all isolated from the primary power okay so if I have a fault here on the bench all this equipment whether it be AC or DC uh, if I have an AC power supply whatever it's all going to be limited uh, energy so a lot safer okay so as far as how much energy you have there's that whole thing going on there's another thing as far as the energy in a transient if I'm outdoors and uh, you know a lightning strike hits a telephone pole down the road or something like that then I could get a surge into my test equipment and it could be you know high uh, now if I'm you know sitting here at the bench for it to make it through self through my house and all that kind of stuff over here it's giving me a lot lower so you got the potential fault current that's one of the things you got to be careful about the voltage level and a transient level so those three things are what a meter is designed to uh, protect against basically you have the voltage isolation for both the voltage and the transients and have a fuse the proper fuse in there for the fault current now one more category mixed okay you could be I don't know like let's say you have a copy machine you're a copy machine repair guy so you're out there working on copy machines you're gonna have AC inside there but plus you're gonna have on the other side of the power supply inside the copy machine you're gonna have some DC electronics so it's kind of a mix between these two things I wanted to cover the, uh, something else on category one a lot of times it's thought of as low power low voltage stuff but you could also have high voltage here so you could be test you know that copy machine example that copy machine might have some high voltage inside it high, high voltage power supply and uh, that's category one and the reason why it's high voltage but it's kind of low energy because it's got a transformer that's pumping the voltage up but it doesn't have a lot of current so it's it's still kind of considered lower energy so it's category one you know if you're a television repair guy right so now if you're high enough voltage you can damage meters pretty quick so you know if you work around that kind of stuff you know that because you may have already damaged something but the, uh, the meters have come a long ways and they can protect themselves for a lot of you know cockpit errors <laughs> you know so now the thing about the thing about the high rupture capacity fuse if you're not measuring current through your multimeter all right so i've I mostly work around category one, category two type stuff. But I've had to work around category three before. And, uh, you know, from time to time, actually. Now, when I'm doing that that kind of stuff, I'm not, you know, I just, I guess I just don't have the wavels to put current through my meter. The only time I do that is when I'm down here in category one. <laughs> you know, then micro amps, milliamps, or even up to 10 amps come on I'm not gonna you know I, I just don't want to put AC power through the meter if I'm on the other side of that breaker okay if I'm sitting here at the bench and I got AC power come through yeah I might do that but otherwise if I feel a lot safer taking a meter like this and clamping on okay uh, and I'll tell you something else if I am measuring that current in those kind of applications I hope I don't get sloppy or lazy enough that I don't remember to move that probe from current see and the meter that's another safety device these days guys a lot of the meters like this guy says you know error error <laughs> Will Robertson you've got the place you know 
you got to get your meter in the right spot. So, if you're around dangerous stuff, that category three, category four, or even category two, make sure you got the meter set in the bloody correct position. Okay, don't rely on a HRC fuse to save the day. I mean, come on. I, you know, I'm not going to do that. But that's what those fuses are there for. So, you know what? For me, most of my meters, those fuses are a waste because if I do accidentally burn one up, which I did the other day because I was running an audio amplifier and this, this thing will go up to 15, over 15 amps. And I was testing an audio amplifier. I had the power up. Voltage isn't really high, but uh, I had it over 10 amps. I had it right, just, just over 10 amps, but it was there for a little while. And finally, the fuse opened. Now I got to replace the fuse. It's probably a seven dollar fuse. Glass fuse would have been cheap, but so let's talk about those safety features. Okay, guys. So some of these uh, features you might find in a digital multimeter safety features. Number one is the fuse. That high rupture capacity. That HRC fuse. That ceramic. The one that has, now, if it is a true HRC type fuse, it will have a UL uh, listing on it. Uh, if you see the ceramic ones without all the writing on them, without the UL mark or some other, one of those other safety agencies, if you don't see those, it's not a true high rupture capacity fuse. It could be. I mean, you know, it's just not certified, but... If you see a ceramic fuse, if it's a ceramic structure, it's pretty strong, okay? People knock those other fuses, but you know what else? There could be some barriers going on. So I put that on the voltage because when the fuse blows, you want that voltage isolation. You don't want it to arc across somewhere else. Well, you've seen those fuses that are in their own little compartment, like a lot of times they are. Well, what if it's a glass fuse even? If it ruptures and blows apart, where's it going to go? Where's it going to arc to? So you see what I'm getting to? There's other ways to solve that issue, like voltage isolation, barriers. What about those little slots in the board that you see? Some people point out, I don't see slots. Yeah, that's not good. Well, that's not true. It doesn't need slots because slots cost money they have to route those out that costs money drilling holes free routing not free so if you can separate things with distance that's the better way to go <clears throat> that's the that's the cheaper way to go and sometimes that's and that can be just fine too if you can't use the separation then you need to put a slot but and then sometimes you put that slot and then you see some of these products that have a piece of plastic from the case kind of go up to that slot to create even more of a boundary. That's more barrier. So when you look at those reviews, when you take apart things, look how many barriers there are. Now, in some of these multimeters, there's, there's very few barriers. Uh, another thing I didn't really talk about, well, voltage isolation, uh, batteries. When you open it up and you see the battery in its own compartment, that's great. When you see the fuses in their own compartment, great. If they're not the high rupture capacity, you know, with UL listing, still maybe, still might be great. It's hard to say. If it's a category four, well, I expect to see it. If it's category three or below, maybe not. Maybe it's not needed. Maybe it's not as important. So now the other thing about the fuse, again, that the biggest case for the necessity of a great fuse is bonehead moves. <laughs> it's that bonehead move where you forgot to take your probe out of the current thing and you're taking a voltage reading and now you got it short. So you want to make sure you stick that back in the voltage. If you're not taking current readings around AC high powered stuff, then that fuse, like a lot of my meters, never gets used it doesn't matter it's waste i mean it's basically just sitting there collecting something dust i don't know oxidation maybe i don't know maybe it's i don't know if they're hermetically sealed but anyway you get my point uh i've rarely used those fuses 
for high energy. Almost never. So, uh, voltageization, that's important. You have transients come along. So if a transient happens, if you protect that transient from letting the voltage get too high, then it's easier to keep this isolation intact. Uh, what, how do you do that? TVS diodes. Usually you find the TVS diodes around the fuse, around the, around the current measurements. When you you got that little short circuit, you're measuring current, it's five milliohms. If a transient comes by, uh, you're expecting, your meter's expecting a low voltage there to read, to identify what current level it is. If it sees a transient very high, it can damage it. These diodes, very low energy. They don't handle much energy. Whether you have those diodes or not, the meter is not going to blow up in your hand. The worst case scenario without those diodes is it's going to kill your chip, just like an ESD strike will. Okay, your your meter will just stop working. It's not a, not so much a safety issue as it is a safety issue for your processor on your multimeter. Okay, the MOV GDT, yes, they clamp voltages or crowbar in this case. You don't see GDTs too often, gas, discharge tube. You don't see those too often, you mostly uh, MOVs, metal oxide varistor. And the MOV, the way it works, is when the voltage gets so high, it's like a varistor. It's like a resistor that drops in ohms, so it clamps the voltage. This guy crowbars, he goes to essentially a short, maybe 20 volts. This guy, he clamps he clamps the voltage whatever setting the voltages you know whatever rating the voltage is so he'll clamp to that level okay that mov it's just not that high of energy uh it's hopefully keeping the voltage low enough so it doesn't arc over the arc is the thing that leads to the next fault because if you have so much voltage isolation say to 500 a thousand volts 600 to thousand volts something like that well then, if if you know you break that voltage, then it you know things break down, then bad things happen. So, where's that going to happen? If you're outdoors, more likely. If you're sitting here at the bench with the AC voltage coming off the wall, not very likely. So, you know, uh, these meters. I don't think I have any meters I'd be afraid to to read AC voltage with. Okay, because I'm in. Cat 1, Cat 2 area, not Cat 3, Cat 4. Every time you go up a category, the energy goes up, I want to say exponentially, but it goes up a lot. So, uh, PTCs, that's another thing you see. Now, those PTC, now. All right, so I just want to explain a PTC quickly. A PTC is the opposite of an NTC, and an NTC, negative temperature coefficient, those are those devices we use for inrush current. They start off a higher resistance. As current flows and they heat up, then they have a negative resistance. The resistance goes down, so then they allow current to flow. So we use those for inrush current. For fuses, we use the opposite. Uh, they start off low, and then as current goes up, they the resistance goes up. So positive temperature coefficient, positive. The resistance goes up a temperature versus the other one, negative temperature coefficient, okay? So Raychem, I think it was, came up with the patent on those years ago. I'm, I'm sure it's 20 years ago or more. And then it ran out. And it's probably more like 30 years even. Gosh, I'm getting old. Uh, anyway, the patent ran out. And for at least the ten, last 10 years uh, or so, even longer than that, uh, I... Probably around, I'm guessing, 13 years ago, maybe the patent ran out, something like that, because everybody else started making them. And so what you see is they almost have a rough appearance. Some of them, the less expensive ones, the Raychems were kind of the shiny ones. So uh, it was a epoxy coating. And from what I remember, they're yellow and shiny and they're kind of rectangular. They still make them. Uh, and we're, we're going to see some in... In future videos and so on but the uh, uh, a lot of the ones we see now are circular they look a lot like MOVs but once you get used to looking at them you can tell the difference okay 
I know they get confused a lot with MOVs and MOVs get confused with PTCs because a lot of the MOVs they use in these multimeters are actually very small. Your surge devices, like say in a, in a surge strip, they're much larger, okay, much larger. Uh, the ones in, in the meters, they're, there's already some defense mechanisms built into the meter, but they're geared to just keep the voltage clamped down for somewhat low energy spikes. Even though I showed the current was several thousand amps, that's still relatively small compared to, uh, like say, like I said, your surge strip. Those things will be rated for tens of thousands of amps, okay? Uh, so anyway, getting back to your meter, um, you know, the PTC is, you can tell the difference because you can take your own meter and measure between the legs and you can see some resistance there and there you know it's a PTC. If you read those leads and it's high, then it's a MOV, okay? MOVs are also variable resistors, metal oxide varistor. So metal MOVs, as voltage goes up, so they're varistors, voltage controlled resistors instead of temperature controlled. So as voltage goes up, resistance goes down. And resistance goes down to only a certain point. That's why they're called clamping devices. And, they, and they'll clamp the voltage at a certain level. Now, it is true that it depends on how much current's flowing through them. If a lot of current's flowing through them, there's some bulk resistance. So the voltage actually uh, will increase with how much current is going through them. Uh, so... Okay, so just wanted to clarify the whole PTC thing, and when you look at reviews and when you look at your own meters, hopefully you can tell the difference, and if not, use your own meter, and you can tell. It's hard to tell if they're shiny or rough. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. MOVs often have the epoxy coating, so they're often shiny, but they can also have the rough coating. It's a phenolic coating. The phenolic coating is kind of a rough, and it's less, it's more fire retardant, so it's actually a better coating. Uh, PTCs, normally you don't want to burn them up to the point where they're on fire. MOVs, uh, that's kind of the point of them, is if a big thing does happen, they're going to melt down, and usually not such a good thing. Okay, since I'm talking about MOVs, a lot of times with MOVs, if there is a big inrush current, a lot of energy, uh, when you're doing a real MOV circuit, you'll have fuses in line with them to take the MOVs off circuit, hopefully before they do start on fire. So, and it's not as easy as you think it would be. But the MOVs using these meters are very small, even in, in the category four uh, multimeters. Guessing they're five millimeters maybe, that's, essentially kind of teeny when you're talking to MOVs. Sometimes I've seen discs that are like, I think the 14 millimeter disc, or maybe even a 20 millimeter disc, that's getting respectable. That's getting uh, bigger. Still not big. 25 millimeters and up, those are, those are the little bit bigger ones. But, so just to give you an idea uh, about what those devices look like. All right, hey, back to the video. Hey, and subscribe if you haven't done so, okay? Thumbs up, that helps the video a lot, okay? Thanks, guys. Okay, five. I added this guy because I thought about it. I, I noticed in some of these meters, some of these really nice meters, they have a lot of containment. And what I mean by that is, like, let's say the fuses are kept in their own little compartment. If something blows, that's containment. So... There's isolation barriers, little walls they put in, but there's also little rooms or little things that like the fuses, the batteries, you know, there's certain parts of the circuit that kind of fit in their own little room in the plastic. And that's a containment thing. Another thing is the two halves of the clamshell, the top and bottom of the multimeter going together, there's that tongue and groove. Some of them are really deep and some are really strong. And some of them have O-rings in them to keep the, contain or the contamination out of them. And that's another thing I want to talk about. You know what? Let me show you the transient ratings, okay? I think that might help. Okay, guys. So, uh, the cat ratings. This is Surge. 
you can have a surge and cap four up to 8,000 volts. And that source of the surge might only have two ohms. So that's 4,000 volt or 4,000 amps. So yeah, the MOV is going to be, it's got to be big enough to handle that. Okay, now let's just jump down real quick, all the way down 2,500. Category one, you can have a 2,500 volt. You, there's two levels. You can be one of the two levels. And if you're 2,500, it's got 30 ohms. So let's just say that was 25 ohms. That's only 100 amps compared to 4,000 amps. You see what I'm saying? Down here, you don't need a MOV or anything near as big as what you need up here. A lot less energy down here. So up here, you can see Category 4 and Category 3 are both 2 ohms, but this one's 3,000 amps, this one's 4,000 amps. So that's the difference, about 1,000 amps. S significant probably, right? Now, Category 2, you can have 6,000, but it's 12 ohms. So it's, it's like, what, 6 times less current? So it's a big drop from 3 to 2. That's kind of the point I've been trying to make. And then 4,000... You know, so you can have two levels. So anyway, that, those are the levels of surges, and this is the ohms. So the closer you are to the outdoors, two ohms. If you're outdoors, two ohms, basically. If you're indoors, 30 ohms. In between, 12 ohms. So you, you can kind of see the energy drops. You're a lot safer in Cat 2 and Cat 1. And I think that's where a lot of us operate. Us do-it-yourselfers, home working on the bench, AC, DC electronics, we're building power supplies with their AC coming off the receptacles and so on. First thing we're gonna add, probably a glass fuse. We got a 15 amp breaker. You know, we could put a little ceramic fuse at the front end. Uh, oh, one thing I wanna mention, the pollution degree. Now when, now when, when, uh, they designed the board with a certain amount of creepage and clearance, they call it. I don't know if I brought that up yet. But when you have two uh, points, say your return and your positive on your meter, when you look inside and they put that little cutout, well, you want to have that distance. And they call it clearance. So clearance is kind of like the, the way the bird flies. It's just metal to metal. So if it, it goes across the board, and then jumps across the little gap in the board, and then across the board and to the other metal. That's uh, clearance, okay? It's actually a little creepage and clearance. Creepage is if you just don't have that gap, it's just, say, a half inch from one terminal to the other. That's, you have half inch of creepage distance, okay? All right, so what happens if that board gets contaminated with some dust and moisture gets on it? Well, that's a uh, pollution degree, I think, three. And most of the meters, I think all the meters, I think all the meters I've seen are pollution degree two. Pollution degree two means you can have some temporary, like, humidity or moisture on the board, but it's going to go away and your board's still going to be clean. So that's why a lot of these meters, you know, they're clamshelled and stuff. So, you know, when you open them up, hopefully you never see dirt, you know, pollution basically inside it if your pollution degree uh, was up four I think pollution degree one's the best two's the second best uh, four they don't even use for meters you can't even have four but four is like rain snow junk you know like say if you're out there the sprinkler system kind of control electronics I don't know I'm just throwing it out there but Stuff that's going to get contaminants on, that's pollution degree four. Pollution degree one is clean, pristine. You know, it's uh, it's sealed, pretty much. Pollution degree two is where you can get some condensation from humidity and that kind of thing, but then it goes away, so it's temporary. So, uh, I think most meters, if not all the meters, I think are rated to pollution level two. So I just want to bring that up because that's that's an important thing too. And then just to show you quickly, some meters that are really safe. If you have gloves on, it's easy to move this thing around. It's just got two positions, auto and off. 
no current reading. It's category four uh, Greenlee meter, UL listed right on the front. I totally trust that. It's a name I trust. Hey, there's another thing I, I haven't talked about. There's a square and a square. You'll see like this, uh, this little symbol that it looks like a little square inside a square, and that's double insulation. And that has to do with that, what we're talking about, the uh, voltage separation, isolation, all that kind of stuff. If you have one thing that breaks down, like let's say the rubber on a lead, that you have something else to protecting that voltage from jumping over. It's just not one level of insulation that protects you. I think that's double insulation or reinforced, what they call it. And that's where a lot of the meters you see today will have the uh, double D. Like right there on that meter, there's a little double D on this uh, little Havel test. So that, and then another thing I didn't talk about was that some meters will scream at you if you turn a dial and you got the leads in the wrong spot. Some of them, like the Havel test, will light up the two terminals that you're supposed to put the leads in when you move it to kind of remind you like, hey, you got them in the wrong spot. And uh, some meters, will not allow you to turn the current if the leads are in the wrong spot. They've got a mechanical thing that, you know, blocks you from doing that. And uh, and then some meters, like say that on the display, you know, like the, like we saw earlier, you know, there's, so there's different features the meters have employed, different manufacturers employed to try to, to try to help you stay safe. But, all right, guys, just wanted to go over that safety stuff with you. Just so if you see a review and you don't see the MOVs and the, all the stuff that you see on some other meters, well, those other meters might be Category 4, and it's really hard. Uh, so if, you, if it's coming from a manufacturer that you even half trust, uh, you got to kind of look into that yourself. I've got an insulation tester. I can test up to a thousand volts. And if you want me to start doing that on, you know what, I think I'll do that on meter reviews. I'll go ahead and test the voltage isolation with my insulation tester. Okay, we'll do that. And by the way, this meter here, this uh, Tektronics, this fluke meter right here, um, if you open this guy up, it's powered by AC power. It's got a glass fuse. How many devices do you see glass fuses on? So, hooked up to 120, right? Is that safe? Is that thing gonna go up in flames? Well, probably not. It's pretty old. It's been around for a long time. It's been just fine. Anyway, glass fuse on the back end. On the front end, it only has two amp fuse. And then it does have a high rupture 2 amp fuse inside, which is kind of funny. But anyway, uh, so, hey, hope you liked it. Uh, I want to, again, thanks my patrons for all the support. And thanks for everybody watching the videos. And I hope you watch to the end. Be safe. Go inspect things for yourself. Make sure you're comfortable. That's the number one thing. And hope this made sense. Give me your comments. Tell me what you guys think. All right. Uh, I just wanted to share some more safety information. Okay. Give you guys some more stuff to think about. So we can move on and I can start doing some media reviews. And when I make my comments, you'll see where it's coming from. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hey, we'll see you next time. Be safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> see you guys.